Hey there, it's Raleigh. I want to catch you before this episode to tell you about our new and improved bonus podcast, More Mercy. Each week, I break down a Mercy Cast episode and show how it not only intersects with Scripture, but how it impacts our daily lives. This short devotional episode is only $3 a month, which is like $4 less than a cup of coffee at the Mermaid Place. To access it, all you have to do is click the link in the show notes. Remember, no matter what you're going through, there's always more mercy. And now, on with the show. And welcome back to the Mercy Cast, where we're learning the art of compassion through the adversity of life. I'm your host, Raleigh Sadler. And over the past few episodes, we've been talking about my journey on the Camino de Santiago. Throughout this journey, we walk through a calling. Then we walk through the first few days and what comes with that. But as every journey goes, there are going to be times where you experience adversity, where you experience trials and tribulations. I'll never forget that moment when I was in Grotto, when I had walked my first 18 miles, I take off my shoe and my foot had swollen more than I've ever seen it swollen. And as, as you know, having had a broken foot multiple times, I kind of freaked out in that moment because here I am. I was so bold before I went on the Camino telling people, you know what? If my foot breaks middle of the way, I'll wrap it. I will be fine and I'll keep going. But this is the first day. And so now my entire journey is threatened because of my own physical limitations. And I prayed, I called friends, and really I just trusted God and ibuprofen to get me through that moment. And so the next morning, I meet up with another fellow peregrino, another pilgrim. We get a cafe con leche, we get a nice little breakfast, and then we start walking up a mountain, just a sheer mountain. And then we go straight down and we walk throughout the day and finally end up in a little town called Salas. Salas was built by a grand inquisitor of the Spanish Inquisition. And you can still, to this day, see the ramparts of the fort there, of the armory. And it was there during that trail, during that walk, that I met Kiko Gavira. Kiko soon would become a great friend. But on that day, we didn't really know who the other one was. And so all I really knew was I was exhausted. So I went to my nice albergue, I hung out and slept. And then the next morning, after a nice substantial breakfast, I started up what I was told was an easy hike. People are liars. This was not an easy hike. Again, we're going straight up. And as I'm walking, I get to a point where I'm like, I really hate my decisions. I am a poor decision maker. I should not have done this. I should not have come here. What am I doing? And as I'm walking straight up, still just walking up, I hear someone behind me and I'm like, keep walking. Don't let him pass you. Keep walking. Don't let him pass you. I don't care who he is. Keep walking. And it was Kiko. And so Kiko and I started pacing with each other. We started talking. And I could not share my story of the Camino without introducing you to Kiko. So Kiko, welcome to the Mercy Cast. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so glad to have you here. Wow. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. So cool. Yes, you you took it. Yes. I remember all, all things. Yeah, I remember I just follow you. And once we start talking, yeah. And That's you cool. and I are walking and... We get to a point where we decide for a moment, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. So we slowed down and you're like, hey, let's go to this little coffee shop. So we go to a coffee shop, we meet Vaticano, who was a guy from the Vatican and we're like, Vaticano! And I think he liked everyone but me (laughs) that first four days of our trip. But we went and hung out and just from from the get-go started having very deep conversations. Yeah, I think all time that we had that conversation because uh, we needed mm-hmm. that time. Because when we want to not talk or we want to like, be alone, just we say, okay, today I work alone or just we're working. And that was a good company. We had pleasure, like good moments. Well, and it's so interesting. <laughs> Funny moments. Right? It's so interesting, right, Kiko? Because 
if we look yeah. at the Camino like a little life, then you can have mm. unbelievably deep relationships just on one Camino. Relationships that are deeper than people that you've known for years because you're connecting at a point of vulnerability where you may not be able to share that experience with someone, but on that moment, everyone who's on the Camino yeah. is on the Camino for a reason. There is something in them that they're saying, I want to leave something on the trail. I want to walk through this. I don't want to walk away or deny what I'm experiencing, but I want to walk through whatever issue that I've been facing. Yeah, yeah. It's all the history, all the people you meet in the Camino is amazing because you learn later. And um, what you say, you know, in the beginning, you say like um, at one point I, I say, I hate my decision. Right. I don't know why you do that. But you keep going. And it's very mentally, you working with that, you fight with that. It's the special thing of the Camino. That's why I love it. Well, and what the, I loved about meeting you was in some ways we yeah. connected on some of the same issues of like, here's something I've been processing in my life. And they were really deep. But we also yeah. could have very shallow conversations. And I think a friendship requires both. Yeah. You can't just be deep all the time. You and I, like, we had some very stupid conversations. Yeah. <laughs> There's a point. Like, what is the point to have that deep conversation all the time? You know, you're going to cry all the way? No. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, I think we share moment in that moment. Like, what's a moment for yeah. everything, you know? That's a good thing. Absolutely. And it's yeah. just like, yeah, there were moments where, I mean, I think like what Kiko just said a couple of moments ago was at the end of the day, you have to, everyone has to walk their own Camino. And so some people yeah. would not walk with anyone. They would just walk alone. Kiko and I walked together for, I don't know, seven or eight days and had a blast. But then yeah. there were also days where we were like, He's like, I'm going to go my way. And I'm like, I'm going to go my way, but let's meet up for dinner. And we did that. In the beginning, I remember that we, we didn't decide to meet, but we found that I wasn't, I remember I was in my, in my burger to, I went to a breakfast. I saw you there. I said, like, you're not here. Why are you here? <laughs> I think, I don't remember the village, but the day of the village, uh, but it was, um, was a funny moment because I was like, I thought you Start well, your way. It was, it was interesting too, because the first day that we met when we were walking up that mountain and then we kind of walked mm -hmm. through, I went another 10 or 12 kilometers farther than you. We stopped in Taneo yeah. and Taneo is in a deep valley. And so we're tired by the time we got there. Well, I had another 10 kilometers ago and I had to go straight up a mountain and down a mountain. And so we eat this the biggest lunch that you've ever seen in your life. And we just split it. And we, I mean, we weren't trying to impress anybody. We went ham on that thing. We just destroyed this breakfast. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm like, I may not see Kiko again. I just might not. And I start walking up the mountain and I'm by myself. And as I'm walking, there's this elderly couple and they just fly by me. Apparently they walk this mountain every day and they fly by me. And then I'm about at the top and I sit down on this ancient wall, which has probably been there for a thousand years. And I'm having this moment. I'm like, this is yeah. a sacred space. I'm going to be here. I'm like, okay, now I'm not going to be here because I got to keep walking. And I'm walking and I'm hurting so much. And then I see this couple and this guy says, poco, poquito, poco, poquito. And I'm like, he's like, campiello, not far. Campiello is not far. And he's like, you're almost there. And so... I keep walking and on the Camino, when you're walking the El Primitivo path, there are two things to look out for. When you're walking and you're at a low elevation, but you see a bench, you're about to go straight up a mountain because this is preemptive resting. Mm -hmm. But when you get up to the mountain, you'll feel a breeze. So the moment you start feeling a breeze, you know that you're halfway there. And so I get up to the top of the mountain. At this point, I'm hurting and I, I, I start to walk down and I'm like, I don't like this either. I get to the very end and I hit a mental wall. It was as if I had walked as far as I'd ever walked before. And I, I really, I'd never pushed myself that far. And I, I sit there and I can barely move. I got my sticks and I'm moving like an inch at a time. I'm like, you know, 
And I look at this cow and this cow's just kind of chilling, looking at me. And I'm like, hola, vaca. And the cow's just like, eh. and at this point, I'm like, I have to move forward. And then I shattered that glass ceiling. And at this point, I'm singing, I'm praying. I'm, I sound like a wild man and I'm completely by myself. And then I make it to Campiello. And as I make it to Campiello, there are people cheering me on because it's at 6.30 p.m. It's late. And I hear, run yeah. <laughs> And it was this moment where I had faced a huge trial. This was one of the most difficult and most beautiful things I'd ever experienced. And I realized that I was no longer afraid of the Camino, but I accepted it, whether it brought good or bad. I was willing to accept what would come. Now, I didn't know that the next yeah. day when everyone that I knew ended up going their own way and I was by myself again, I didn't know that I was going to bump into Kiko. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Uh, yes, it's true. Yeah. Uh, fantastic village. That village was Remember, so beautiful. Remember like, walking by the little lake underneath the place where like yeah. our hotel rooms were? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. With a river. Oh, it was right. amazing. But yeah, I said lake. Oh, yeah. It was a river. I You're right. Remember it was a river. <laughs> and yeah. it just kind of snaked its way through the little village. And what was yeah. interesting about that was most people stay in albergues, but that day, like, Unbeknownst to both Kiko and I, we decided to be fancy. So we got a hotel. Yeah. We just say <laughs> how we were like, no, we're going to be fancy today. And yeah. I remember hanging out that evening and you actually bought me a shell. And so the, mm. the scallop shell yeah. with the yes, sign sir. of St. James is a emblem that all pilgrims wear on their Camino. And I hadn't mm -hmm. had one. And so many people will wait for someone to give them a shell. That really wasn't my mentality. I just didn't, the one I bought was came broken. So I was like, that ah, seems like bad juju. I don't know if I want to have a broken shell on my Camino. So <laughs> I waited and then, you know, he gave me one and I put it on my backpack and we start walking. Now, the way we're going, again, you're going through this lush forest. It's beautiful. You follow yeah. the yellow arrows. That was wasn't so it? beautiful. And, like we would stop every like quarter mile and be like, I'd be like, hey, Kiko, <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, I was, I, I'm the person that, who do the Camino for, for sport stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a mental, I can do everything, blah, blah. But in the end, I'm like, I want to enjoy this moment. I want to stop in the quiet place, hear the natural, like listen everything, like, you know, feeling the, the, the deep word. You know what I mean? Like, the, I don't know, it's uh, the, the deep natural, like you say, like uh, you are like wild, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not all time walking because if you're walking to you know, all time, it's, it's a little boring. You need to enjoy every step, every moment, every hill is deep up or, or not. It's, you just need to enjoy. Yeah, it's like in life, you don't know what's going to come at you. You don't know if it's going to be good or bad. You don't know if you're going to have a great season or a terrible yeah. season, but there's something you can do that will keep you from worrying every moment. You can actually be present in the moment. Hmm. And that's what Kiko's describing. Like we, yeah. we both were being present and we were taking things in and we were breathing deeply. And yeah, yeah Kiko, you know, he's like this CrossFit champion. He wants to go out there and just, he loves, <laughs> I feel like you love the, the physical aspect, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what That's was true. it like to be present in that moment? What's a amazing? It's something like I cannot describe now, because what you say, like you need be in the present. But in that moment, like it's something like you feeling, yeah, you feeling like I'm here. I do this. I'm, I'm very proud of me. Mm -hmm. If like I'm tired, my legs is tired. Uh, so. I should stop. I should back. You may a lot question. Yes, you need to keep going and enjoy the moment. I will, I will always enjoy the company, enjoy the friend you meet, like everything. Like I love that Camino. It's a, that is the good thing. And uh, now it's, I think in like six months after, like I'm very, I still yeah. proud of me, but living that moment, like pressing was amazing for me. And it yeah, being in that moment where, I mean, there were moments as we walked that day even where we would stop and just be like, 
you'd be like Raleigh or I'd be like Kiko and look at this, take a deep breath, just look around. It's beautiful. And that day was deceptively hard because I remember we started going and we get higher and higher and it gets steeper and steeper. And we walked, I don't know, 20 some, 20 some miles that day. Was it like 28 or 30 kilometers? Yeah, I think so. Like like Uh, Yeah, straight uh, up a mountain. And I remember I'm starting to get really tired and starting to experience a lot of pain. And we see, we see this memorial for a pilgrim. And I said, what does that say? Oh. And you said, well, this famous pilgrim died here. And I remember mm-hmm. saying, yeah, yeah. I don't blame him. I don't, <laughs> because I could see, I could see how that would happen just because it was so physically taxing. But yeah. then we were at the top. Yeah, of course. I'm also... I mean, I'm going to put like a point, like, but die without views, I think it's amazing, like in the middle of the mountain. But yes, it was hard, but the recompense was more, was amazing because the views like be the top of the mountain was fantastic. I remember that moment. It was amazing. Like, uh, and also we meet the people, the couple yeah, from Sevilla yeah. and they... They say the story about the, the toys, like what's amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, story. Tell, me, tell me again about the toys because the couple gave you these two small yellow hands yeah. and they gave me some as well to carry with oh. us. So that is one, one guy was uh, building these toys. He decided to do the Camino and start give to the people like free, like friendly, just to the f- real friends. And then um, he found a family with a kid with a thin mental problem like down. I'm not sure which one it was, uh, or um, how I say? I think Down syndrome, um, right? Outings. Yeah, or outings. I'm not, I'm not sure now. Yeah, I think so. So he was talking with a family and he gave one of these. And then um, that when he left, the kid uh, hung up. He legs like gosh, he legs like uh, you are a real friend. So this guy decide to to decide this kind of thing and give free to the people in the Facebook. Um, just the only thing you need is give a donation for a charity for the for the um, for help the outings or like the 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 happen to the kid they they have the kid. And thing is a very beautiful, very helpful thing. Because he captured that present moment and he gives it to people yeah. saying like, this, you can yeah. experience true friendship and saying you can experience true friendship on the Camino. Exactly. This is what is uh, the Camino exactly, no? In the beginning, everyone going to think like, I go alone because I need to be alone because I need to think a lot. But then... You start meet the people that, what you say, we, the, you have the yeah. same thing, the, the, the same problem. Like you connect a few things, like, and you say, maybe I'm not alone. Yeah. Maybe I have people. You know, that, that's, that's very good of and the it Camino. Kind of blindsided me because I didn't know that people could connect with me the way that they could connect with me. I, It was phenomenal because generally in life, I feel that it takes a long time to connect with people at a really deep level. But me, you, Vanessa, we had a crew. And so you have someone from America with someone from Spain and someone from Colombia together. And my Spanish is very poquito, muy poquito. Vanessa... Her English was muy poquito, but somehow the three of us communicated really well. And I think we both depended on you to communicate to the, to the other. Like for me to talk to Vanessa, I talked <laughs> to you, you the translator. <laughs> yeah, my, my English is, is still all right. I mean, no, it's a perfect one. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, I was so proud when I, when I say to my friend, like, I was a traducer, like to the people, to the techie, say you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a good experience. It was a well, funny moment. Um, I know when, when, for example, we're talking with the uh, old people from Sevilla and they, they, that's a speak nothing English. Uh, you cannot understand nothing. Like, 
was a funny moment. Yeah, they were but like yeah. my abue- abuelo and abuelita, you know, it was just like, yeah. like I could not speak in a way that they could understand and vice versa. But if you were not around me, they would come up to me and they would stand in front of me and they would be like, Kiko. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, they're asking where Kiko is. Well, and, I'm, and then people would ask you the same thing. And I think what was yeah. so cool is you think you, you think you're going to figure out your problems or your pain or whatever brought you to the Camino. You think you're going to figure it out on your own, but that's never been the design. People help yeah. you. People walk with you both physically and figuratively and help you process what you're going through. And I think there's something beautiful in that. I think there is something that's rooted in who we are as humans, where we need other people to kind of come alongside of us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Yeah, you, me, Vanessa, we were a crew and we walked together for Mm -hmm. like a week and we would bump into other groups of people and we would always get along with most people. You know, not everyone wanted to be friendly, but there weren't many people who were just downright mean at all. It was just more like Mm -hmm. you found the people that you, you fit in with and if you wanted to walk it by yourself, you did that too and... Yeah, that was a love. And that that was for me was amazing the moment like because for me it's hard to say someone like I wanna be alone, I wanna walk alone. But well I remember with you um Vanessa was she was uh, on yeah. her own. Vanessa so. just did her own thing. She'd <laughs> yeah. be like she wouldn't even yeah. tell us. She wouldn't even <laughs> we'd be yeah. like, Where's Vanessa? I'm glad we're not waiting for her. Yeah. And then it is just yeah. like, but I mean I remember we got to the top of the mountain and now we're starting to walk down and the walk down is very treacherous because it's very steep and it's very rocky. Oh, we nearly fell or twice. Three times. Yeah. We kept, we kept slipping. Oh, three times. Yeah. And, yeah. But what was fun was yeah. we got through it, but you and I just, we, we kept walking and walking and I just remember being like, yeah, this is awful. But as we went down, you start seeing these hospitals or they were like ancient albergues from the medieval times and yeah we're walking and looking at them and they're still up and then you're walking through these little medieval villages and they're completely abandoned and just seeing history and yeah yeah I remember we stopped in one the hospital one mm-hmm. hospital yeah you love oh, it I, you're on the top of the I mountain trying to sneak into it and you're like i don't know if we should do that and i'm like yes. i gotta see it this is history and it's like overgrown and i'm sure there's like <laughs> snakes in there but i'm like look look kiko kiko look at this this is amazing and and we were yeah. sitting on these little pieces of concrete that came out of the wall and they were benches from the 1200s that people have sat on yeah ever since that's incredible and it's like if you've heard of the knights templar this was one of their places where they looked for and looked over pilgrims. They they cared for pilgrims in this place because there weren't many other places. There weren't ancient yeah. hotels you could go to. And so if the weather got really mm. bad, you stayed in this, what they called a hospital. And so yeah. we walked and we walked along the ridge. And what was interesting was at this point, it was difficult and it was hard, but we kept building this objective record of getting through difficulty. Even though it was hard, we kept pushing through it. Even though we experienced pain, Mm. we kept pushing through it. And I remember Kiko at one point said, you're doping because I kept taking ibuprofen. (laughs) And he's like, you're doping now. You're doping to get through it. And I'm like, no, I'm not doping. I'm just trying to survive. And, And what was funny is like we went to this, I think at the end of that day, You couldn't stay in the albergue that I was in, so you went ahead, and then that next morning, I left and met you at that albergue, and and we we started walking again, and that was the day, that next day, where we basically, again, go straight up a mountain, but this time, we go straight down, and then we go over this beautiful dam, and then we go straight up, and what was important for me that day was one of the biggest trials I faced was I couldn't get enough oxygen, because I I didn't know I was a mouth breather, and... (laughs) I don't want, no one wants to be a mouth breather. Some of you out there, you're mouth breathers. Stop it. Because you get way more oxygen if you breathe through your nose and out through your mouth. And so I Googled that. And then the next day mm-hmm. I did it. And I remember we're going down and then we go up and you were like, you're on a mission. Like you're not, 
you can't be stopped. I'm not talking to anyone. That was the day we met Pia. And I'm like, I'm not even talking to Pia. And you'll hear from Pia and Simon soon. But yeah, I was like, I'm not talking to any of these people. We're just walking. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I remember the, the day we met like Pia, I, every, everyone that we, we went for the road to that village uh, that nobody had their bed. Like it was because it was a party yeah. in the village. Yeah, that was yeah, good. So we meet again because I was in the same hamburger after the next day, the, def- the day after, in the Pia and Sam, uh, everyone, except you. You was in the village. I was on side of the village. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, it, that was good. I didn't enjoy too much of about this, that village because I was in a, a far way. But yeah, it was a well, good moment. After that, you and I kind of decided we're just going to walk together until we're not going to walk together. And we mm-hmm. stayed walking together for five or six days after that. And it got to a point where, like I said earlier, how we would talk about serious things, but then silly things. And one of the things that you and I would do is there were moments we wouldn't talk for 30 minutes because we're just walking and we're thinking about things, we're processing yeah. things, we're, we're facing fear. One of the things, and I talk about this in an earlier episode, the first few days, I was facing fear of the trials and tribulations that I would experience on the trail. I wasn't exactly experiencing the trials and tribulations yet. I was experiencing the fear. And I would say to myself over and over and over, and I would whisper to myself, I would say, I see you fear. I'm walking with Jesus. That's what I would say. But now when you and I are walking, there'd be moments where we weren't talking. And I would say, I see you fear. I'm walking with Jesus and Kiko. (laughs) (laughs) And, And over and over. And we wouldn't talk until you'd hear, caca. (laughs) Kaka. <laughs> and one of us would say, and we would just point because we didn't want the other person to step in cow poop because yeah. there were all sorts of animals up there and they didn't care where they went to the bathroom. They weren't using a porta potty. I mean, yeah, it was exactly. everywhere. And, and you do, you get messy, man. I mean, it is so muddy up there and you just, it's, yeah. it's beastly. It really, truly is. Yeah. It was, uh, a few few way it was a little hard to walk in because it was a, a lot so of caca, caca. <laughs> a lot of mud. So like, <laughs> yeah. And isn't that how life is? And then sometimes life is just there's caca yeah. everywhere. It's just all caca. Yeah, you know, Ooh. it's just like I, you just I, 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 move through it. You know, it's just like I don't like that it's raining caca today, but it won't always be caca. <laughs> yeah, just depends on you. You take seriously that caca, no. <laughs> That is just stop it with that. Yeah. And then I remember the um, once the Vatican say the guy from Vatican he say like the 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 floor and it's from the Romans and stuff. And then we just focus on that, like, wow, this is Roman way. Yeah, this is Roman way. Yeah. And yes. We got really into it. And Kiko brings up Vaticano and this gentleman from the Vatican. There was a day where we all got to a place we were eating and he said hello to everyone but me. And I was like, he doesn't like me. Yeah. He doesn't like me. And now I'm like feeling this rejection and I'm like, he's the worst. I'm like, he can tell that I'm a Protestant. He can tell that I, I lean in a Lutheran way. He, of course he's not going to like me. And you know, it was one of those moments where I was just like, I, a couple of days later, I walked by him. I just, it was early and I was tired, but I just remember ignoring him completely. And it was like 630 in the morning and we're all getting ready. Everyone's out of their rooms and we're all getting ready to walk. And he said, everyone carries their own cross. He looked at me and said that. And I'm like, why did he say that? And then we start walking yeah. out and Kiko pulls me aside and says, you were kind of rude to him. And I was like, what? And he goes, no, you were rude because you completely avoided him and you did this and this and this. And I was like, huh, you're right. And you know, what could have been an opportunity for me to be defensive? I was like, I knew at that moment that Kiko and I knew each other pretty well at that point. And I was like, okay, so he, he knows that. I'll take that. And I'll say, I'm not going to do that. And by the end of the day, me and Vaticano were like best friends. Yeah, because you were so open with everyone. You were talking with everyone. Except he, you take very seriously, like, why is he doing? He doesn't say hello to me. Yeah, yeah. And I say, dude, you are not like that. I know 
every every play we are, you talk about everyone, except in that guy. I also I talk with him that I didn't have too much to say, but and it was yeah. that next day, you and I, we had just crossed into Galicia, and now we're in this oh. Celtic kind of albergue, getting a cafe con leche, and I think we got like ham sandwiches. Yeah, you know, it was so good, and you know we got bocadillos, and we're sitting there eating our bocadillos and talking and. He's there with a whole crew and he's like, Bongiorno, you know, he's like, just, he's larger than life. Yeah, he's he's true. He was larger like, yeah. than life. And I was like, you're going to make this right, Raleigh. You're going to make this right. And so he was just kind of like staring at me. I was kind of staring at him and I was like, you'll make this right. So I walked up to him. I said, Hey man, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm like, good. We were both kind of sparring. And I said, I want to tell you something. And he's like, what's that? And I said, I once got to meet the person who succeeded Mother Teresa in Calcutta. And we had this long conversation about Mother Teresa. And he goes, Mother Teresa? And I said, yes. And he goes, basically, he loved her very much. And in that moment, we shared a moment. And even though we were very different, and we had our own reasons for the Camino, we were kind of bonded in a really beautiful way. And we would end up walking together a couple days later, just me and him. And you know, we're walking, he's smoking his cigarette, we're talking about life and it's <laughs> yeah, he, he may have chain smoked the yeah. entire Camino, but it was he was he, he was smoke amazing. Lot, like every, the rest of us were struggling with our lung capacity, but this guy, he's he, that's how fast he was. He was the fastest guy. He was like he was the last one to to left the alberga and then he just passed us like how? For one moment, I thought it was a race. Like, I got to catch him. We, yeah, we would catch up and no. we'd be like, Vaticano. <laughs> like, and he would ignore us. And it was amazing. Yeah. But, um, at that point, as that day ended, we were pretty proud of ourselves. We were feeling pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then we had a choice to take an easy way into Afan Sagrada or take the hard way. And for some silly reason, we took the hard way. And we went again straight up a mountain. I don't know. I mean, the, the grade was like 50 to 65%. I mean, it was, it was intense. And after walking 18 miles through the mountains, you finish it that way. But then we get there and Afan Sagrada means the sacred fountain. And this was named after a miracle that allegedly happened there where St. James saw a, a widow and her child and they needed food but there was nothing in the village. And so St. James turned the fountain into a fountain that produced milk and they drank the milk and they were saved. And so they still have that name. And so Kiko kept walking, but I would later, I stopped there and we caught up again. And what we found was just throughout, throughout the trip, we were able to connect with others, connect with ourselves, connect with each other. Mm. And yeah, there were moments that were superbly difficult. There were moments that were really hard, yeah. but somewhere in that difficulty was beauty. Yeah, exactly. For me, it's like the Camino is, is like the life, to be honest. It's something that you feel entire. You feel like sometimes you just want to give up. But in the end, you see how it's uh, days. You enjoy the days. It's uh, something beautiful to, to live in. Like the Camino, the life is, it's something like unified the Camino because uh, it's what you say, like a lot of high, a lot, a lot of uh, mountain, like by then when you finish, it's a recompense. You feel it like I finished. I did. I remember when we, I was working with you in the mountain and you're stopping, you stop sometimes like, I know I, I give you time because I know, yes, you need like mm-hmm. take brief and go walking. Um, but in the end, you finish. You, you, top, you are in the top of the mountain. I'm like, you see, you got it. That was amazing. That was very proud. And I say to you in the way, I say, I'm very proud of you. And then I just meet you. But I was like, I'm very proud of you. Wasn't it interesting too, like for me, because I'm a Floridian, right? And so it's very flat here. And going up mountains, yeah. I remember earlier on, I would, you know, be like, I just need two minutes. But then as we kept going, it was like, 
I got, we all got stronger and stronger and stronger to where it didn't take as much. Mm. And so there would be moments where your body's just tired and you're, I'm like, just, I just need, I just need a minute to catch my breath and then we'll be fine. But by the end of it, like your whole body, you start feeling stronger. Your lungs are stronger. Everything is stronger. And then you're able to do so much more than you could do in the first five days. Yeah. And so it's like That's true. at the beginning, yeah. like that, that one day when we went straight up the mountain and then down the rocky path, that was a hard day. But the days that followed, I was all of a sudden like, no, I can do this. And I didn't have to stop near as much. And there'd be a moment like we, mm. we would stop just to stop. We'd be like, we should probably stop and let our muscles rest. It wasn't, we weren't stopping because we were exhausted. We were like, let's, let's drink some water out of our backpacks. Yes. So, yeah. You know? Yeah. Let's eat a sandwich that we brought or, yeah, yeah. or eat those. We bought these little granola bars and they were life changing. Like Kiko and I were oh, throwing yeah. down on these, on these uh, granola bars throughout the way. We were so thinking through that. <laughs> and we would go into these little shops and these, you know, ancient villages and, you know, yeah. just buy, like, I'm going to buy a pear or I'm going to buy an orange or I'm going to buy, you bought enough for that day. Because it was a game mm-hmm. of ounces. Just like in life, we can only carry so much. When you're on a trail and you're living out of a backpack, you can only carry so much. And so you have to prioritize mm-hmm. what you're going to carry. And there are some things you have to let go. And as you're facing this adversity and as you're facing these trials and tribulations, this is an invitation for you to be present in a moment, even though what is coming into your life may not be welcomed. Maybe whatever coming into your life could feel painful, but that is an invitation Mm. to experience reality for what it is and to let go of the things that would make that worse. To let go of the things, maybe they're thoughts that you hold against yourself. Maybe it's past pain, but it's being able to surrender that and say, this is a game of ounces and I can't carry this anymore. And so I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to walk and I'm going to keep walking. And for you, as we talk about these trials and tribulations, what was something that you learned during that time that you could share with us that could be an encouragement? I learned what I say before, like, sometimes you cannot fight mm. alone. Mm. You think like, I can, I just want to be in my own. I want to be alone. Nobody, no person. Like how many people say, I want to have a dog. Yeah. I know a relationship yeah. with the people, but that's impossible. You need someone like, because then like the mountain no? or everything, the life is difficult, it's hard. You need someone like push you. I does not mean, that don't mean like you need a, a relationship like with a girlfriend or boyfriend. You need like yeah. a friend, a friend like a family, like you say, yeah. you can do it. Just, just, and it's simple. It's simple say just keep going. Are you keep going? I learned about that. I mean, because, and I was the person who said like, I want to be my own and I want to meet nobody because I need thinking, thinking, thinking of that. I made a rally. <laughs> and that was that perfect moment because what I said before, like for me, very hard to say, so well, like, mm-hmm. leave me alone. Or so, no, leave me alone, like yeah, rude. Sure. Like, yeah. I want to be alone. But for I was so easy, like, hey, tomorrow, do you mind if I, we go our, our way? Yeah, go your own. And that was amazing. Let's just like, eat for dinner. Living you your know? time. <laughs> what? Let's hang out yeah, when yeah. all said and done. Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I also listen, listen to the people. Because sometimes you, yeah, sometimes you connect it, what you say, no? And then um, they give you advance without yes. you ask yeah. or yeah. something like that. Non-consensual advice. You don't want that. But it, but it, yeah. But listening to people, it, if we trusted them, it could be very helpful, right? Sometimes it's listening is like because I was the person like talking a lot, like cannot be quiet, cannot be <laughs> in silent. But I learned to to listen to to see what the people say, and then I will talk if I no need to talk. I don't say nothing, but first listen, and then like is that interesting for me or is helpful? Like you say, I will. I gonna take with a pleasure. Well, and I I felt like when we were in Lugo in this ancient Roman walled city and it, the walls completely oh. intact. And like Kiko and I walked all throughout the city. We walked the walls. It was beautiful. We hung out with some new friends, Jamie and James. Jamie is from Scotland. 
James is from England. And I'm like, are you guys supposed to be friends? You know, I don't know the geopolitical climate. And he goes, sometimes we are, <laughs> but they've known each other for years. And like Kiko and I were, were having dinner with them and just, it was such a powerful night because we're sitting along a street. It's one of the most beautiful streets you've ever been on. The seafood yeah. was amazing because you're in Galicia. And it just, it was so wonderful. But I remember we're talking to these guys who we just met and there was a connection. Yeah. And a lot of the things that I would later take from the Camino, I got from that conversation, just from listening to these guys and not talking, but just listening. Mm. That's the point. Uh, you see, imagine that same situation. You are in Lugo, a beautiful city. Like we, we are amazing all part, like the old city, the castle. You are alone. You didn't alone. For what? You're thinking, you're thinking, and that's it. And then we, we meet this James, these two guys, and I found the same. I, I think the same of you. Like, there are, like, I learned a lot about, about him all day. Um, yeah, I enjoy a lot that night. Well, and I remember right before we all met up, on this podcast, I talk about some of the things that I've struggled with my entire life. And I talk about how over the last year, I realized that perfectionism had impacted me in an adverse way, in a way that wasn't good. And I was always thinking that if I could do something perfectly, then I would be enough. Then I could be accepted. Then whatever I'm doing will be satisfactory. But I'll never forget right before I met up with you, there was this little bar restaurant called The American. And I was like, I'm the only American in Lugo right now, right? And it was awesome. I'm the only American in this whole ancient town. Everyone else is from some other place. I mean, 50% of them were German. Like yeah. Everyone was German. But I'm sitting there and I'm like, I run into a couple of the people that we had walked with. And I just said, hey, you want to go to the American? Because I'm American. It's my home. And they're like, okay, let's go to the American. So like four people, a couple of them can't speak English. So they just stare at me and I just stare at them. And it's a beautiful moment. And we go. And we go out to kind of the, I don't know, the veranda, like this, this little back porch kind of thing. And there's a tree mm. and a tree has a little, the tree has a little metal grate around it where it has those little holes. And I have my little plastic yeah. chair that I'm sitting in and I go to sit down. And as I'm sitting down, I hear no Raleigh. And then my back legs fall right through. And so I pick it up and I'm like, oh, that was awkward. Now everyone's looking at me. Great. But it's fine. It's fine. I pick it up and I go to sit down. I fall through again. And I'm like, okay, okay. That was awkward. Now everyone's kind of looking and laughing. I pick it up again and I fall through a third time. And at this point, I'm cackling. And it took me four times to actually get the back legs on solid ground. And one of our friends, Anna Lee, looks at me and she goes, that took you three times. And I'm like, I know. I'm glad that happened. And she's like, why? And I'm like, <laughs> Because these days I'm trying to learn what it means to be an imperfectionist. And I just did something silly and it doesn't matter. If anything, it's making me closer to you all. And I'm more present in this moment because yeah. when you're present, perfectionism has to flee. Because to be a perfectionist, you have to consistently think, well, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? And when you're just being present, you don't really care. You're just choosing that moment over fear or over rumination of the past or what have you. And so for me, that night of just being present with you and Jamie and James, it was so big because I think we were all learning from one another. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, it's that point. Like we listen, uh, I was talking, was like, we enjoy. And that was funny because we were loud a lot. Yeah, it was a funny moment. Uh, we enjoy the food. And you see like, you meet a lot of people, there's nobody perfect. No it's one's perfect. perfect, you know, like everyone has, yeah, no one's perfect. Especially on the Camino, right? Everyone, everyone has knows a liter. Not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first thing, like, someone asks, like, why are you walking alone? Something happened to you, do you know? <laughs> like, why you do a lot kilometer? Because I don't know how many kilometers without, like, 300 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, at least. Yeah. Like, 320 yeah. kilometers was how far the walk was. But you and I kilometers. probably walked about 500 kilometers in 13 days. <laughs> yeah. 
it was oh well i took 12th day oh yeah you didn't so yeah my last day was uh, my last day was a little well, crazy and the thing about one of the things is as we kind of transition towards the end there was a beautiful moment and it was the last day that kiko and i walked together and i'll never forget this day because we both at that point you just you have to listen to yourself and I think both of both he and I, we absolutely loved walking together. But then we got to a point where we're both like, I think we need a couple of days. I needed a couple of days to walk by myself. He needed a couple of days to walk by himself. Mm. And I remember us talking, saying, let's just have an incredible day and let's go explore and let's just take a long time walking. And so we walked to this ancient Roman temple that was unearthed in this medieval village that no one's in. No, I mean, uh, it looked like someone. No one had been there in months. The trail is very well kept, but we went off trail, and so we're seeing snakes. We're seeing massive, like buzzards or eagles. We're seeing all sorts of different animals, and we're walking, and we see like we yeah. see the Roman walls, and we're walking the Roman path. But as we get there, there's no one around, and it's like you're walking into this desolate, empty village, and then. Yeah. This, abuelo comes out and we're like you know where do we go where how do we go to the temple and somehow he knew we were in the village i guess he heard us but the, yeah the explanation was so little weird I, I speak spanish i couldn't got it we're like i think he said that way but i'm not sure in that moment we walk into this beautiful roman temple it was such a perfect last day because we're in this place where so many people walk by because at that point in the Camino, you're exhausted and you just want to get from point A to point B. But Kiko and I mm. decided to go off off the grid, really. We just decided to really get lost in history, literally yeah. get lost in history. Yeah. And we walked and we're just walking through this temple and thinking about the people that sacrificed here and worshipped here and just the history of this Roman temple. It's the oldest Roman temple in Spain. And, and then we yeah. leave and we got very lost. In perfect. It, yeah. <laughs> the temple was a perfect. You can see everything. It was the like paintings, like in no one touch. Yeah. No, I touch. Yeah. It was a good one. It was a beautiful village. Very like nobody like was ghost. Yeah, it was village. like a ghost village. And it was <laughs> you yeah. and me yeah. and Abuelo. And we were just hanging out and, <laughs> We're, we're yeah. looking at stuff that you would see in books and they were so perfectly preserved. Hmm. But then yeah. it's like, okay, we got to start walking back. And now you and I are getting nervous because I was, I was because nervous. You didn't know if you were going to get space to stay. You didn't know if I, yeah. if they like were recognizing my reservation. And so I remember at that point, we're both tired and I, and it was such a life lesson for me because I'm, we're going and I'm like, I'm tired. And so generally when I'm tired, I'll think too much or I'll be, or I'll get antsy or whatever. And I was just like, yeah. but Kiko's nervous. And so I'm like, <laughs> I got to be strong for Kiko in this moment. So you know what? I'm not, only one of us can be in that moment where we're nervous. So I just kept walking thinking it's going to work itself out. It's going to be fine. God provides, the Camino provides, something is going to happen for us. And yeah. there were, we got lost on the way back and we kept running on snakes and a snake went under our feet and there was just all these things. And then I got on my GPS and I was like, okay, I think I can find it. And you're like, it's not that I don't trust you. I follow you every time. <laughs> I was like, I know how to know the option. <laughs> I follow you. And then we, yeah. we ran up on this beautiful monastery that they would have hmm. pilgrims over, you know, 800, 900 years, stay there. And all of a sudden we were back on the trail. Oh yeah. And we were back and then we yeah. just, and then we ended up in Afarera and met up with friends and had a blast, had a wonderful time. And at that yeah. point, it started to hit me that I didn't know these people 10 days ago, but now I, I feel like I have family. I have I have people that I will probably be friends with for the rest of my life because we met on a trail. It's like, you never know who you're going to meet. And I think when you meet people, when you're going through difficult times, if you yeah. choose to go through it together and not isolate yourself, but like you said, 
let that person speak into your life, let that person be with you, then you will grow like you've never grown before. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm angry. That's that right. Because sometimes we, we decide to charge the people before yeah. we meet and then don't listen. Like, uh, oh, I don't know. He's, you know, like a little happened with a guy, with a Vaticano guy. But, and then you get the opportunity yeah. to listen, to, to see what they can offer you or that, how they can help you. You can discover like amazing people. Like, like I, I meet you. I was, um, yeah, I'm very same. glad to meet you. Um, yeah, I'm feeling like good relationship. Like yeah, I'm very same. happy. Oh, that. Yeah. Because you'll this, you decide to left. We'll see. We'll see how that person can help me or how I can help. And I felt like you and I listened to each other, even when we had to say hard things to each other, because on a trail like that, you're all you have, like you need each other because there are moments Mm -hmm. where like your body gives out. There are moments when your mind, you're just like really stressed there. It's like life. And if we try to do this on our own, we're missing the fact that we were never supposed to do this on our own. We have always needed people. That's how we were created to be. Yeah. And so on that note, I think it's a great place to end. And so Kiko, thank you so much for joining me on the Mercy Cast. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this podcast. It was a pleasure. Um, yeah. It's, yes, we're talking now. Yeah, remember all the time like, that, that happened. Like, I remember the time that Lugo, the, when we left Lugo, was, both of us was so tired. Like, I know. If I can, I stay one day more. I remember I say that if I can, I stay one day more in Lugo because I'm very tired. I was like, like, like one of the last days. Yeah. There's nothing more it's, difficult that I've ever done in my life, but also there's nothing more beautiful yeah. that I've ever done than walk the Camino yeah. with the one and only Kiko. <laughs> If you are interested in more stories like this one, buy my book, Vulnerable Rethinking Human Trafficking. Also, if you want bonus content, you can click on the link in the show notes to access our new and improved weekly bonus podcast, More Mercy, where I dive deeper into each episode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave MercyCast a five-star review. I want to hear from you. You can email me at info at mercycast.com. This podcast is brought to you by Let My People Go. To learn more about how you can love your most vulnerable neighbors through your own vulnerability, go to lmpg.org. Till next time, have mercy on yourselves and each other.